The biggest problem with driving yesterday's cars on today's gasoline is what heat does to this stuff. Today's gasoline with the 10% ethanol it doesn't have the same anti-boil properties as the old gas does. So when you're dealing with a carbureted car, vapor lock and fuel percolation becomes a real problem. So essentially this is, this is how it goes, right? Driving along, temperature goes up. Generally it starts in the fuel pump itself. If you're running a mechanical fuel pump, the mechanical fuel pump gets hot. It boils the gasoline inside the fuel pump and it, it separates, right? Uh, so it's only able to pump vapor. You stop running. The other problem, and this is super common, is heat soak. After you shut the car off, the first, oh, let's say three or four minutes after you've shut the key, the temperature under the hood actually goes up. That's because the water is not circulating anymore, but the metal is all still radiating heat. So what happens there is that the fuel that's inside the carburetor and inside the pump, the lines, all of that, the temperature goes up, it boils, and the pressure goes up high enough that it pushes past the needle and seat and floods over into the carburetor. And generally what will happen is you'll have to, you'll go out to restart the car and it, it'll, you'll have to crank it for 10, 20, 30 seconds, sometimes with your foot flat on the floor to get the thing to react. Alright, well there is a simple 95% effective fix for this and it only costs you about 8 bucks and takes some time, you know, figuring out how you're going to do it on your car. And the, the deal here is to install a vapor separator style fuel filter. A lot of cars from the late 60s and the early 70s used these things as factory equipment. But like the, 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 the technology has been lost to time, right? Nobody even talks about this stuff anymore. But I'm going to show you two examples. And now here's the thing. I can't give you a step-by-step -step on how to do this because every car is different. Every car from every year, every car from every manufacturer. But the principle is the same. So I'll show you two examples that I have on my own cars and then you can construct yours based off of the, the general idea. The first one is this. This is our 72 Slinger. This is our daily driver. And on this one here, what we've done, and we, by the way, a, a vapor separator filter, you can always tell because it has three nipples. It has one on the, in, on the intake side and two on the outlet. So this one here goes to the carburetor and this one here is the vapor separator. Now, this is important, and, and we'll make this distinction now. You have two types of these vapor separator filters. There's one type that in the third nipple has an orifice. It's usually a 60 to 100 thousandths of an inch hole. And that's so that the fuel will keep moving, but it has resistance. There's another style, mostly used on AMC engines, uh, Jeeps, 70s Jeeps, um, that has no orifice in it. And that's the one we used on this car. And the reason for that is because on this car, it has a factory vapor line going back to the tank that was part of this whole emissions control device. So it has an orifice, a 60 thousandths of an inch orifice, in the tank itself. So what we did, we used the non-orifice vapor separator, ran fuel line from the third nipple, which doesn't have an orifice, over here to the hard metal line that runs back to the tank. And what's happening now is as that temperature rises and the, the gasoline starts to boil, it gives it an escape route. It gives a, the pressure a place to go. And also, because the fuel is always moving to some extent, it doesn't stay stagnant in the fuel pump long enough to boil. So this right here will take care of about 90% of your fuel you know, percolation and vapor lock problems. Now, on our 68 Roadrunner, here, come inside. We have the same basic setup. This is a Wix filter, but this one here actually has the orifice built into the, the filter itself. So here's the main line that's coming from the fuel pump. It comes around here and tees off and goes to the carburetors. And right here we ran a quarter inch line. And what we did was we used quarter inch tubing and ran that all the way back to the tank. And at the tank, it's teed off so that the pressure is able to vent itself back into the tank and not upset the incoming fuel flow. And this particular engine used to boil over these carburetors like you would not believe after a hard run. And once we installed that system there, never again, no problems at all. So cheap, simple, easy fixes to common problems, you know. 
That's what we're all about. Oh, and shirts. We got our shirts now too. I'm wearing a blend, not on the back, but um, we got our shirts in. They're in the store. Uh, check those out, and you know, buy stickers and all, all that other stuff. So that's it. I'll see you tomorrow.